Good afternoon, Hugh. Good afternoon, Dan. Now, you've just come fresh off uh, yet another lively debate at Liquidity. Certainly. This time, talking about HFT and its impact on the execution landscape. Uh, from your point of view, what were, were some of the biggest points that were made? Well, it's very interesting to see uh, a broad level of agreement, actually. I was, wasn't expecting that, that uh, markets are suffering from a lack of investor confidence. I think that's actually self-evident, but it's nice to see agreement on that. And uh, there should be a strong message from, uh, from that panel that the regulators have uh, that as a focus to, uh, to examine uh, when they make their recommendations for uh, stability of, uh, and any changes that they want to, to uh, implement. So one of the talking points though, that did seem to cause a little bit of uh, friction was uh, when it comes to feeds, uh, particularly with HFT, whether they're placed on the point of cancellation, whether they're put on the point of ordering, and a lot of people seem to have different, differing opinions, but what's yours? Uh, our view is that um, uh, there is uh, indubitably uh, an increased amount of message traffic in uh, equity markets, uh, certainly in the US, that's been measured from 2000 to 2009 was the last time we, we saw it. It's a ratio of, uh, of, of orders, uh, messages to orders of about eight, uh, rising up to 75 in, in recent years. Now that creates a lot of extra uh, um, signals in the, in, in the market that um, you wonder how much uh, empirically those have uh, an effect on the trades that do take place. Uh, with being in the uh, minority of trades that uh, don't take place. So what we're uh, concerned about is the effect on um, uh, the uh, quality of the markets essentially uh, and is there a point at which that becomes too much and is that something that the regulators can take a look at. Um, we're not actually actively calling for uh, a particular cancellation fee or a, uh, a, a particular ratio uh, but we just wanted to highlight that as uh, something that can affect the quality of the markets and, uh, again, going back to the central point of investor confidence. Yeah, and what was interesting is it almost got into the it talks that, that sounded more like a, a question of physics. In fact, at one right. point that was mentioned, uh, right. uh, the um, quantum physics. It's almost an existential question, if you like. Yeah. Precisely, because they, they were talking about how it's, particularly HFT, is not really playing the game of trading, it's playing the game of friction. It's just looking to see what trends are out there and sort of bumping along them. And in that sense, the market shouldn't be there to service them. Is that uh, an opinion that you hold? Not quite as strongly as that. I think um, the opinion came out of the panel that uh, trade cancellations are, n are necessary. We certainly uh, view cancelling uh, or amending a, a trade before it's executed as a legitimate um, investment uh, activity. The question comes is whether that uh, becomes too much. Uh, to affect the other trades that, uh, that don't take place. Does it engage uh, investors into thinking there's more activity in the market than there is, particularly um, people who look at uh, activities in volume uh, and in traffic and in uh, momentum in, in trading as well. So uh, when it comes to um, the issue uh, of fairness, we think that's something that's quite central to it. Absolutely, this, this topic of mirage liquidity hmm. coming up uh, quite a lot. Is there a way that it, it's possible to, I suppose, have your cake and eat it in that sense to come up with a system that allows people to place these orders but for somehow have those to be flagged that you know they are not sort of confident liquidity? It's a very difficult question because then you have to talk about reducing the number of venues to reduce the no, uh, amount of, of traffic. Then you're talking about reducing fragmentation and reducing the competition that brought us lower transaction costs in the first place. So it's a very difficult question for uh, regulators to answer. And it's also a very blunt tool. Um, if you have an artificial level, then I'm sure that uh, um, there will be artificial activity around that sort of level, which again creates a, an apparent uh, appearance of, uh, of a lack of equality in, in the markets. Now, you were talking about the regulators and we were talking about, uh, about fragmentation and the fact that we are seeing a lot more uh, trading styles, trading venues, cross-asset trading, it's getting a very, very, very complex um, place to where we were even just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's the right direction? Do you think it's going to continue getting more complex or do you think this is part of a cycle? Uh, I think the market will decide that for itself. I think um, uh, when you have, uh, it's essentially buy-side dealers are uh, problem solvers for, the, for their fund managers and they're very creative in uh, finding those solutions. Um, they are also becoming very, very well versed in the aspects of market microstructure that perhaps they weren't uh, five or ten years ago. Um, so when it comes to uh, cross-asset classes, well, you look at uh, various asset classes and correlation between uh, assets uh, as well. 
uh, that all of that has to be taken into account when making strategic decisions. And it all comes down to the data. Uh, is, is it fair to say that a trader is now becoming a, uh, more of an analyst than a, a trader? I suspect so. The, the traditional feel for the markets has uh, been reduced. The fewer humans that there are uh, actively engaged in the market, uh, and therefore now it's, it, it's more about being able to analyse lo a lot of data and make the traditional quick decisions that the dealers can have to make. And yet again, that comes back to this, uh, this issue of physics and, uh, and, and mathematics, that it's, again, it's trend watching, but not in the old school media sense of Quite. the word. In the new school world, we've seen these patterns time and time again. Mm -hmm. This is where we think it's going to go. And that, mm -hmm. that's quite a huge development. Mm. Well, technical analysis has always had its place. Um, and there are uh, a, a myriad of solutions out there uh, to, 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 to help. Um, uh, the buy side in, their, in the activity that they undertake. Uh, we don't have a level of sophistication of uh, ultra low latency, high frequency uh, trading. Um, in their activity, they play a, a very different game, uh, if you want to call it that, uh, to ourselves. Uh, however, um, to add value to the investment process, it has to be data driven, it has to be analytics driven, and it has to be fed back holistically into the investment process. Now, one last thing I'd just like to ask you, obviously, we've been talking about regulations, MIFID 2 being uh, possibly the biggest one to affect the HFT space. Do you think that uh, the proposals are heading in the right direction? Um, we've seen a couple of proposals that have been surprising, such as the uh, obligation, the proposed obligation to make two-sided markets for all algorithmic trading. That seems to me to misunderstand the nature of, uh, of algorithmic trading and uh, and the, uh, the purpose of market making as well. I think that will probably disappear in, in, in time. Um, you've seen also some proposals that uh, will have inevitably unintended consequences such as the 500 millisecond um, uh, resting rule for markets. Again, will create its own different uh, mechanisms in the market. Uh, but I think the regulators are looking now to uh, have the end investor in mind rather than the, the active market participant um, uh, or the, uh, the high frequency trader uh, at the forefront of their thinking uh, and for us that is a good thing.